Welcome to Mrs. True Crime. Today's video is an in-depth look into the brutal murder of Scott Wesley Buchal Sanchez. It's a tale of paranoia and innocence. If you are triggered by anything dealing with cannibalism, mutilation, or crimes against children, feel free to click off this video. Perhaps check out a fish video for some lighthearted content. If not, I'm Nicole. Let's get started. In the early hours of July 26, 2009, in San Antonio, Texas, 34-year-old Adi Sanchez grabbed a butcher knife from her mother's kitchen and brutally stabbed her three-and-a-half-week-old infant. She didn't stop there. She further mutilated the corpse, chewed at least three of his toes off, and ripped out his brain. Priscilla, where's your sister at? She's just sitting on the couch. She's, she's gone crazy last night. She was hearing voices. But she kept bringing me the baby, and finally she calmed down, and I took her back to the baby. And then now I just woke up to her screaming. Furthering her attack, Adi began to target herself, inflicting a stab wound to her chest and stomach. You stabbed yourself? Born in 1976, Adi Sanchez grew up in a household with seven other relatives. An absentee father and frequent moving conditions had its ups and downs for her. For a time, starting at age five, Sanchez heard voices. They were mainly good, according to psychiatric records, telling her everything was fine, but occasionally, she also heard bad voices. One in particular named, quote, Lucy, was horrible towards her, telling her to cannibalize herself. Lucy and the other voices went untreated, a fact that no one took notice of. Friends and family described Sanchez as the most level-headed. Perhaps the good voices outweighed the bad, since Sanchez did well at school, graduating in San Antonio, Texas with a decent average to pursue a career as a pharmacy technician. It was during these studies in 2003 that she met and fell in love with schizophrenic Scott Buchholz. Their relationship was dysfunctional, often ending in breakups only for the two to reunite after some time. The following years, a lot of outside forces took hold, and Sanchez's mental health worsened. In her court-appointed interviews, she described using drugs for the first time in 2006, which only heightened Lucy and the clan of bad voices. With the voices now louder, Sanchez began to display erratic behavior, causing her to lose her pharmacy job. With her career tarnished, she bounced from job to job, usually working in fast food, though she briefly worked as a home health caregiver. Perhaps having a better day than usual, Sanchez visited Austin, Texas in May 2008 with a friend. While her friend received acupuncture treatment, Sanchez wandered off to a CVS pharmacy where she spent several hours browsing shelves. Staff, concerned, called the police, where she was then taken to Austin State Hospital. 
For 16 days, Sanchez underwent various tests and was diagnosed with schizophrenia. During this time, Sanchez's mother, Manuela Sanchez, phoned police after she hadn't returned. She states she suspected Sanchez was into drugs and specifically informed police her daughter suffered from no mental issues. Meanwhile, in Austin, Sanchez was referred to the Center for Healthcare Services in San Antonio upon her release as an outpatient. Court documents claim that she was paranoid, mildly delusional, depressed, and psychotic with hallucinations. Throughout the summer of 2008, she received free counseling and antipsychotic medication, and it seemed to be helping. Unfortunately, budget cuts at the healthcare in September 2008 forced Sanchez to make a difficult decision pay for treatments or cut off ties. Sadly, Sanchez couldn't afford the treatments, and the paperwork to apply for government benefits became too much to handle, and she stopped going to the hospital and taking the medication. Around the same time her mental health was being challenged, she was re-entering a relationship with Scott, and a few weeks later, she was pregnant. Her pregnancy followed through without incident. At one point, Sanchez went to a counselor for depression, but omitted taking any medication. After Scotty Botrol Sanchez was born on June 30th, 2009, Sanchez's recovery was complicated by an infection, requiring her to use a catheter for a week. This darkened her mood. Sanchez's OBGYN prescribed antipsychotic medication, but Sanchez complained that it made her too tired. Approximately 17 days later, she stopped taking the medication. Her doctor planned to prescribe an alternative. But before help could be received, Sanchez got into a fight with Scott and moved out of his home. On July 20th, she and the infant moved in with her mother and sister. That same afternoon, she visited a familiar clinic complaining of paranoia and stress. Sanchez described to counselor Luwinda Combs at the OPGYN clinic that assisted throughout her pregnancy that she was paranoid other women were trying to breastfeed her baby. According to Combs' notes, Sanchez was hearing voices that others want to take Scotty away from her, as well as, quote, visual images of other children's faces transposed on her baby's face, unquote. Combs suspected that Sanchez may have postpartum psychosis and told Sanchez she needed an immediate psychiatric evaluation. Combs called an ambulance to Metropolitan Methodist Hospital and phoned their psychiatric unit that Sanchez would arrive with a postpartum psychosis diagnosis. The hospital worker, according to Combs' notes, didn't want to take information over the phone. Still, Combs gave specific details of Sanchez's delusions and hallucinations. The ambulance arrived at the hospital at 11.39 a.m. At 12.05, Sanchez was examined and underwent physical tests and lab work to determine that her body was mostly healthy. Around 3 p.m., she was finally examined by the hospital's psychiatric counselor. During the 44-minute evaluation, records reiterated what Sanchez said to Combs. Though the counselor makes notes of Sanchez's visual hallucinations and the audible voices, there were no claims or suspicion of postpartum psychosis. Sanchez then requested to be admitted to the hospital, seeing as her 16-day stay at Austin Hospital worked prior. Instead, she was given a standard for admission psych evaluation that boiled down to one question. Was she suicidal or homicidal? Sanchez stated that she wasn't either. A spokesperson for the hospital emailed the observer stating, quote, Qualified mental health professional perform a psych assessment focusing on three things, whether a patient is suicidal, homicidal, or experiencing a deterioration such that if we let them out of the hospital, they will be a danger to themselves or somebody else. The qualified mental health professional then gives assessment recommendation to ER doctor, and doctor makes his own assessment on whether a patient needs to be admitted. Doctor's recommendation always stands. Doctor bears liability for a decision." Unquote. Sanchez was then given a flyer on dealing with anxiety with the name of a clinic she could contact, though it had no address or contact information. Sanchez's lawyer, Ed Kamara, said, quote, She's got a big red light on her head saying, I'm going to explode any minute. You'd think they would at least talk to her doctor or ask her about her history, but they don't do anything like that. Unquote. At 3.53 p.m., Sanchez was released to the care of her sister. No follow-up appointment was made. Over the next few days, the voices worsened, telling her that the devil was in her son. She said she would avoid looking into her infant's eyes for fear of seeing the devil. 
Five days after being released from the hospital, Sanchez went to Scott's home demanding her infant's diaper bag with the baby in her arms. At some point during their exchange, Scott requested a copy of the infant's birth certificate and other documents. Sanchez's behavior shifted at this. Scott's mother, Kathleen, noted Sanchez's erotic behavior and urged the new mother to seek help. Paranoid that Kathleen wanted to steal her baby and breastfeed him, she ran from the house. Sanchez threw the car seat into the front passenger seat and sped away without safely buckling the baby. In her haste, she left behind the diaper bag she came for, her purse, and her medication. Soon, either Kathleen or Scott called the Bexar County Sheriff's Department, reports differ, and reported concern over Sanchez and the infant. The incident was treated as a disturbance, but the police took little to no action. Sheriff Chief Deputy Dale Bennett said they took a report, but couldn't do much else. Quote, if this guy had given us an indication that she had postpartum depression or mental defects she was suffering from, we may have addressed it differently. Unquote. Scott insisted he would have told the deputy Sanchez was depressed, but he wasn't sure. At some point during this day, whether before seeing Scott or after, Sanchez took the antidepressant Cetilifram. According to WebMD, Cetilifram, quote, may improve your energy level and feelings of well-being. This medication works by helping to restore the balance of a certain natural substance, serotonin, in the brain, unquote. It goes on to say that it may, quote, take one to four weeks to feel a benefit from this drug and up to several weeks before you get the full benefit, unquote. The following day, Sanchez murdered her baby. The autopsy revealed that Sanchez mutilated the infant's genitals. His head was nearly decapitated and his skin was flayed. Authorities, as told by Sanchez, concluded that the mother ate parts of the infant, including his brain. Medical examiners found bite marks across the body. It was later discovered that Sanchez's sister and her two children, five and seven, were sleeping in another room during the gruesome attack. They weren't harmed. Adi Sanchez was hospitalized for her self-inflicted wounds and later charged with capital murder and held on one million dollar bond. Adi didn't mean to do that. She was not in her right mind. Gloria Sanchez, Adi's aunt, told the Associated Press by phone. Neighbors couldn't believe the tragedy. 23-year-old Luis Yanez said, quote, Why would you do that to your baby? It brings chills to you. They can't defend themselves. Unquote. Another neighbor, Alan Taylor, said, quote, Once she gets back in her right mind, she's going to be devastated. Unquote. Prosecutors accepted a plea deal, and Sanchez was evaluated by three separate psychologists at the North Texas State Hospital of Iran facility, including Dr. Randall Sellers and Dr. Lucy Payer, to determine her competency. Dr. Perrier wrote, quote, It is my medical opinion that Ms. Adi Sanchez was incapable of telling the difference between reality and her delusions, unquote. Dr. Sellers concurred, saying, quote, it is my opinion, based upon reasonable medical evidence, that Ms. Sanchez had a severe mental illness, paranoid schizophrenia, at the time of the alleged crime. Unquote. According to their notes, Sanchez said that she heard voices telling her that her mother killed President John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. For her mother's role in killing the president, the KKK was mad at her. In Sanchez's own words, the voices also, quote, told me to hurt Scotty. He was going to be the apocalypse, unquote. Continuing, she said, quote, The voices told me to eat his insides. I was a harlot because I had committed adultery. There was a demon in my stomach, and it would only come out if I ate Scotty. This had to be done by five in the morning. After that, Scotty would evolve, and he would no longer be possessed, unquote. She explained how she killed her son, and how she gagged and threw up while eating his flesh and brain matter, but the voices forced her to continue. Even after her arrest and hospitalization, Sanchez says she continued to hear the voices. They told her that she was going to get a heart transplant and that she was going to be hurt. Scott Buchholz isn't buying it. He says that although Sanchez had postpartum depression and confided that she was schizophrenic, she appeared normal. It just doesn't make sense. The, de the devil doesn't tell you to do anything. Where's the devil? Who talks to the devil? I think she should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. That's a death penalty. Case like this. That's what I believe should happen to her. She killed my son. She should, she, she should burn in hell. Scott went on to say that, quote, she was a sweet person and I still love her, 
but she needs to pay the ultimate price for what she has done. She needs to be put to death for what she has done." Unquote. On June 30th, 2010, Ali Sanchez was found not guilty by reasons of insanity and is currently in a mental health facility where she remained for, if not all, of her life. Quote, I'm glad my daughter is getting a second chance at life, Manuela Sanchez said. I'm sorry my grandson didn't get that chance. Unquote. One fifth of new mothers suffer from severe postpartum depression, which includes symptoms like despair and failing to eat or sleep. Postpartum psychosis is rare, affecting roughly 1 in 1,000 women. According to womensmentalhealth.org, symptoms can occur as early as 48 to 72 hours after delivery, starting with restlessness, irritability, and insomnia. These women, according to psychiatry professor Richard Pisikoff at the Baylor College of Medicine, suffer from delusions frequently involving religious symbols and a desire to harm their newborn. Quote, the most common part of postpartum psychosis is the delusional thinking, said Richard. Often, but not always, it encompasses some type of religious thought. God is telling you to do something. The devil is telling you to do something. Unquote. Postpartum psychosis is a higher risk in women with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Dr. Perrier, who worked in both Sanchez's case and Andrea Yates, a high-profile case in Texas where a woman drowned her five children claiming that Satan was inside of her and she was trying to save her children, Yates was found not guilty by reasons of insanity, says that women with schizophrenia who do not take medication raise their risk by 50% or higher. According to postpartum.net, there's a 5% suicide rate and a 4% infanticide rate. The website goes on to say that many women never have delusions of violence, but because the illness administers delusional thinking, it's very important for the mother to see a doctor immediately. Postpartum psychosis is temporary and can be treated with medication, monitoring, and support. According to Royal College Psychiatrist.ac.uk, the recovery is between 6 to 12 months, with severe symptoms lasting between 2 to 12 weeks. Even with recovery, mothers may feel depressed, anxiety, and low confidence. But with time, most mothers feel like themselves. Adi Sanchez's road to recovery was short-lived. If she was given the right care and patience, perhaps baby Scotty would still be here. I'm Mrs. True Crime, and remember to be kind, be allowed, be aware. For more information about Adi Sanchez, why not check out some of these awesome links? And if you like what you saw and heard today, why not drop a like and a comment? Maybe subscribe while you're here? <laughs> I make new videos every Wednesday, and you don't want to miss what's in store.